Now that we've covered every step of universal story language, it's time to help you remember exactly what each one does. Luckily, USL was created with symbols for each step. Each one is designed to represent an important element of its moment or phase. So in this lesson, we'll cover the meaning behind these symbols to refresh you on every step so you can jump straight into outlining and using them in your story. This video is a lesson from a full free mega course on our website. If you're ready to supercharge your storytelling, click the link in the description and start your journey today. This video is also part of a series, so if you haven't watched the previous videos, there are links down below. As we mentioned, the symbols for phases and moments are slightly different and help you remember which is which. The phases have arrows pointing out from both sides, which you can imagine means that they span multiple scenes or locations, and they bridge the gaps between moments, which have one single arrow pointing down, helping you remember they usually last one scene in one location. We'll start with the setup. The setup phase is a house because the protag should be in their ordinary world, at home. Things are normal. We should also see the environment they're in. The house can also remind you that the protag hasn't yet set out. They are still, proverbially, at home. The catalyst is a flame because it's the spark that starts the story, or the fire lit under the protag's butt. Just like a fire, this is a burst of action and is usually unexpected. The hesitation phase is a roadblock because the protag has not yet started their journey, and it's filled with warnings, like a roadblock sign. They will either want to think through the journey a little more, as if they're putting up a roadblock before they set off, or they will need to prepare for the journey, in which case the roadblock reminds them they aren't quite ready to leave yet. The outer gateway is a big iron gate because it represents a change in location, which this moment often has. The Rotag is passing from Act 1 into Act 2, as if passing through a gateway into the new situation. This symbol also looks like a skull to remind you that this new situation should be dangerous, and the Protag will often be nervous about it. The testing phase is a beaker because the Protag is experimenting, and their attempts can be explosive or fascinating. Just like in a high school science experiment, they are paired up with new people, follow new rules, learn new skills, and after some fiddling, the protag should get the hang of things. Then comes the moment of danger, which is like a bomb because this usually lights the fuse and builds the tension until the explosions at the midpoint and the moment of peril. You can imagine the famous Hitchcock quote of building tension by showing a bomb under the table. Well, it's here we cut away to the bomb. The uphill climb is a sloped hill with a pointed sign because things are becoming a bit more difficult and we're pointing toward the midpoint. Things are also improving for the protag, so you can imagine this upward motion as being representative of the protag's success. The midpoint is a pin because it marks the middle of your story and marks many things like a raising of the stakes, a shifting of the goal, and a prize and price. It is the anchor point of Act 2, so if you can imagine a pin in a corkboard, you could drape a string over it to show the protag's rise and subsequent fall. Also, it often marks an event or an important moment, just like a pin is used to hang invitations, photos, or reminders. The downhill fall is of course a rocky tumble, where the protag suffers damage and tumbles to ill fortune, shown by the rock slide. You can imagine them facing a series of injuries as they plummet to rock bottom, playing into the rock motif and highlighting the protag's failures. The moment of peril is the worst thing that will happen to the protag, so the symbol is an X made out of bones. It's in the shape of an X because it often seems like the protag's goal is no longer possible, and it's made out of bones because there is usually an element of death or near death. Also, other than pirate maps, an X is usually bad. Rock bottom is the easiest to remember because it's just a bunch of rocks. You can imagine the protag alone at the bottom of a rocky pit, or completely covered in debris, or just sadly kicking rocks as they mope about. The inner gateway marks the shift from Act 2 to Act 3, and marks a great internal change and a recommitment to the goal. So this old stone archway represents a mystical gate deep underground. The protag undergoes their epiphany and is reborn, and because this moment is so spiritual, the stony arch is something you might find in an ancient temple. Now, the protag is ready for their final plan. This one is a map, since the protag has a clear direction and strategy. Because allies are normally involved, you can imagine the protag as a military leader guiding their troops to victory. The story climax is a mountain peak because this is the biggest moment in the story. 
It's what we've been waiting for, the peak of the action, where one wrong move will leave the protag tumbling to their death. Everything has been building up to this, and there is an epic quality to mountaintops. Also, this moment is all about the goal. And what is the first thing you think of when you think of big mountains? People who make it their goal to climb them. Finally, the aftermath is a rose. This is because the protag usually wins or dies for a cause. If the protag wins, they're celebrated. And if they die for a cause, they're mourned. Both common uses of the flower. Now, when you look at the 15 symbols of universal story language, you can easily remember which is which and what happens in each one. We also know that a lot of structuralists will suggest a note card method for outlining your story, where you write each scene or potential scene on a note card and organize them into your story from there. For this reason, we've also named each step with different starting letters, which you can see here. That way, you can write these on the corner of your note cards to quickly reference the moment or step they belong to.